Hey, Dustin Vanoy here. I've talked about Spark monitoring in the past, particularly within Azure, and I'm going to revisit one of those topics. In this video, I'll talk about running Azure Databricks and getting your log and your Spark metrics into Azure Log Analytics. Now, Azure Log Analytics is a pretty common way to do monitoring within Azure. You may have a bunch of other resources that you're already using Log Analytics for. And so um, what has changed is that a log4j version, which was under the covers this whole time since the earlier version I've shown, that has been upgraded to a log4j2, and that is going to be uh, not compatible with all of the older runtimes, and the older library is not compatible with the newer Databricks runtimes. And so I'm going to show you um, which branch has code that will work on the newer Databricks runtimes, talk a little bit about how to experiment with that as the Databricks runtimes keep coming out, and show you where in the where to get this code and where in the repository to look for instructions on how to do this so that you can keep up to date by checking out the actual readme uh, and i don't have to release a video every time a small change happens so with that let's dive in and go through some abbreviated steps that i've shown in the past and then look more closely at what's actually in this newer branch which will work on the newer databricks runtimes please note that uh, there's a data and ai summit talk about observability in Spark. I'm gonna to link to that in the description here. I'll also have a link to my own blog site where I'll make sure I keep some updated information about some of the compatibility things that have come up in the past and will probably continue to come up as things change within Databricks. So with that, let's dive right into our Azure environment and walk through the steps. Okay, the first step is to make sure you have a log analytics environment. I'm going to set up a fresh environment here I'll uh, skip through as much of the steps as I can and just show you how do we get the credentials for this environment at the end. Okay, once that environment spins up, go to the resource. And uh, what you'll need to do is go down to agents and get the information you need from there. So here's where you can find the workspace ID and a key, which will be what you'll set up to make sure you know which log analytics environment to go to and to authenticate as you send those logs over. So let's take a look at the actual GitHub repository that is used. So this is uh, the organization in GitHub of MSPNP, it's Pattern and Practices from Microsoft. And then this repository itself is called Spark-Monitoring. Uh, within it, the main branch no longer supports the latest Databricks runtime. So you want to go to the selection here for branches and pick uh, L4J v2. That is the branch that you'll want to work from. Let me talk through what's in the readme that we'll make use of uh, so that you know where to look and kind of keep an eye on if instructions change. Uh, so for starters, the directory structure might be important to you. Primarily what you'll need is to make sure you clone this and get the pom.xml, which is what tells Maven the different resources and how to build this. You'll clone this repository. You'll go through and need to make sure you've got these capabilities, the Databricks CLI. Uh, you'll need a Databricks workspace. You'll need a Log Analytics workspace. And you'll want to make sure you get to this branch uh, after you've cloned. In addition, we'll need Maven to build this. So the recommendation is Java 1.8, Scala 2.12, and Maven 3.6.3. The configurations that have been tested and marked as supported are listed here. So there's a note about logging event size limit. In general, if you're seeing exceptions or trying to understand limitations, come back and look at the readme as your best bet. Uh, I can try to answer some questions, but I think this is more thorough and complete and has some good links to like how you could try to work around these or at least understand them better. There's a few ways to actually build this. Uh, Docker is a really good option if you're used to using Docker and don't have all those dependencies I mentioned above. Another though is to just use Maven. And so this describes using Maven um, one way of doing it. I'll show you kind of how I, I use Maven once we get to that step in a moment. Okay, and then we have the really important section about configuring the Databricks workspace, how to get uh, all of the required things uploaded to the correct space, set up correctly as init scripts, et cetera. I'm gonna come back and show you these parts throughout this video, so we won't get into that right now. One thing I will call out while I'm here is that there's this optional piece about setting up the Azure resource ID headers. So if you're interested in making sure this makes it and shows up as a specific resource ID in Log Analytics, make sure you configure these. I tend to skip that step, and so I'll go ahead and skip that for this video as well. 
And then of course, once this is done, a very important piece is that on Log Analytics, it will automatically create the custom logs that are used. And finally, there's some good recommendations about debugging, uh, good recommendations about filtering so that not every single log message makes it over to Log Analytics. So in order to control cost, you may want to take a look at filtering and apply some sorts of filters here. And if you want to contribute, here's the contributing link. All right, let's jump into actually building this with Maven. So the first step to build this yourself would be to clone it. And so you can come into uh, this code dropdown and choose clone this way. And then in your uh, Git CLI, you would type git clone and then put this path. I've already done that, so let's jump to using Maven. Okay, here I am in the directory where I've cloned this. I'm using Windows subsystem for Linux. So this is going to be Ubuntu commands, um, not Windows or Mac commands. Uh, like I said in a moment ago, you can go use the readme's directions for using Docker, and that might be the most straightforward path if you're not already building things with Maven on a regular basis. Okay, so I've got the same structure basically as what's uh, in the repository. If I go ahead and do a git status command, that will show me that I'm on the right branch, L4JV2. Now that I'm here, I want to do my Maven command. So I copied the MVN install dash P and I can set the profile. Okay, build succeeded, which means that in my targets directory, I've got a new jar. And uh, if you look closely somewhere in here, it shows us where that was set up. Here, I found it. You'll see a line kind of like this that shows you exactly where um, the jar has been set up. So this is the file I'm going to end up using. The other important thing that's in the instructions is to modify sparkmonitoring.sh. And if I go into source, scripts, and open this with Visual Studio Code, I can monitor this sh script. Okay, so now I can go through and either set my log analytics workspace ID and workspace key with what I took out of my log analytics agent section, or I can set this to use environment variables like the uh, instructions on how to use Azure Key Vault secrets. I will follow these instructions. So I can actually copy and paste this section from the readme and replace those two lines. Okay, those lines are replaced. If you want to get your Azure resource ID header working, this is where you would fill in this other information. Follow the instructions in the readme to do that. So I'll go ahead and save that and I'm ready to continue on to the next step. The next step after the build is to upload this to this location on your Databricks environment. I'll show you how to do this with the new Databricks CLI. Uh, it's a preview version right now, but I think these command will continue to be valid for a while. So here we're going to use the Databricks CLI to get everything uploaded. First, I'm going to create a directory in Databricks file system, DBFS, and that's where I'll put the jar for this example. Next, I'm going to find the jar file and upload it to that location. And from there, we can now reference that Spark monitoring jar when we use our init script. Now for the init script, that's no longer supported on Databricks file system. In this case, I'll create a directory on the workspace files, which is set up the way the readme tells you to. And from there, I'll go ahead and use this command to upload my sparkmonitoring.sh to the workspace file. Note that I can also choose to upload the jar to the workspace, and that works with certain Databricks runtimes. So let's take a look at doing this with volumes. And so in this case, I'm going to follow option one, and I actually don't need to have my jar in DBFS. I can make that come from the volume as well. Remember that this is gonna be most useful when working with shared access mode clusters and the workspace option is not available for me. So first I'll need to grab the command that uh, uploads the init script and I'll need to change the catalog schema and volume name to whatever I'm using in, my, in your environment. Note that it says DBFS in this command, but it's not actually going to be stored in Databricks file system. It's gonna be stored wherever this catalog and schema is set. So I've replaced this with main default Spark Monitoring Vault to re reference my environment properly, and that's going to upload my Spark Monitoring.sh. However, if I'm going to use my jar from volume like I just suggested, I also have to do one other thing that Spark Monitoring file. So right here, it tells me that I need to replace this section here in the file with 
something that references my location. So let me copy this. Let me pull up sparkmonitoring.sh, search for where my jar file name gets used. It's a couple of spots. This is where it gets set the first time. Right here is where it gets copied. So I'm gonna replace this whole statement with this statement instead. And now you have either need to configure variables for catalog and replace those, or just hard code them into your init script, which is probably just fine. So as long as I've got that correct, I can jump back to terminal. I can upload that file to the correct location. And now I also need to upload my jar that I built earlier. Right here's the command to upload the jar. Again, I'm gonna replace the catalog schema and volume name appropriately. Okay, so here I'm gonna show you a cluster that's actually going to be a single, access, single user access mode, which means I can use workspace files or volumes or cloud storage for my init script. In this case, I'm going to use the Daybricks Runtime 13.3 LTS, the latest one that's uh, currently supported by the library at the time I record this. Now I've got just a simple node, termination, setup, all the normal stuff I do. Um, important though to the logging is having the, the key and the ID that you need for your log analytics workspace defined. And so I've got mine set up instead of putting it into the Spark monitoring script, I've actually set it up to pull from a Databricks secret scope. In this case, it's backed by Azure Key Vault. And so this is going to automatically set these environment variables and then my Spark monitoring follows the directions about uh, using these environment variables to define this in the sparkmonitoring.sh script. If I look at my init script section, I've defined a workspace source and I've uploaded to this spot that is documented in the readme as well. In addition, just to call out that we've got a uh, additional logging option here that would let us save the logs to Databricks file system. This will also save standard out, standard error. I show you this because this is an alternative way to get a not as real time, not ported into log analytics type of log tracking that you could just query as Databricks data frames, you know, read in the files and work with them. However, uh, really important is that if I hit trouble in trying to create this cluster because of the init script, I would then go look at this path here and find the standard error and standard out to see what happened in my init script process. That's kind of the best way to find out what goes wrong if something doesn't work in the init script. Okay, so we've got init script, we've got our Spark environment variables for log analytics. We can go and hit confirm and start up this cluster. Once it's up, we can prove out that this log analytics piece is working. One other note is that the actual jar file I'm going to work with is stored on Databricks file system in this example. You now have the option to either change that to a workspace path or change it to a volume. So the changing it to a volume is documented in the readme. The workspace path is not, but it'd be the same kind of process, just using workspace in the beginning of the path. Okay, now that it's finished starting up, let's go ahead and run a test notebook that does some logging we can then query. So this is uh, some code at the top that will actually get the log4j uh, logger instance and let us reference it uh, from our PySpark code. And so once I've run these two lines, I'm able to do log.info, log.debug, uh, log.error, et cetera. And when I do that, it's going to make it into log4j, which also means it'll make it over to my log analytics environment. If we jump over to log analytics, the first time it creates these tables for you when it first starts running, it might take a little bit of extra time that initial time that you do it. Um, but then basically note that by default, this filters out any empty tables. So until there's data, you won't see these, but otherwise these will be automatically created once data starts flowing. And then we can jump over here and start to query the tables. If we start with this table and run for the last 24 hours, we'll see quite a bit of information uh, included, though it might be hard to see at first, including the messages that we actually wrote with our log.info. Now to fine tune a little bit what we're looking at, I can add a where clause. And now I'm down to just the messages that I had it print out that show up. Okay, and so those three messages show. Uh, we can get a little bit fancier with this too. Let me show you that and then I have another video which actually covers more in depth how to write these KQL statements, which is the language you use with log analytics. 
Uh, be aware that it has to be sort of highlighted, so be careful what you highlight when you hit run. Uh, looks like that worked. It displayed it a little bit differently by using this project to specify the columns. And if you want to get fancy, again, see my other video, but you can do some JSON parsing and things if you put JSON into your message. While we're here, I'll just point out that we can actually look at our Spark metrics as well. And this is a longer conversation than we'll get into in this video. But my Spark metrics are coming over, uh, and that can be something that you compile these into a graph. There are some templates you can get a hold of to see a lot more about what's actually happening with your cluster and with your Spark application. Okay, real quick, I'll show that you can go query those cluster logs on DBFS, assuming you turn that on. So what you can do is if the initialization breaks, which usually is what would happen if something's wrong with your jar or with your spark monitoring.sh, then you can go and look in this directory, find your cluster, and look at some of the standard out to find what actually went wrong with the initialization. You'll need the cluster ID, which actually comes from the URL in the cluster page. And then when you run something like this from the command line, we can see that there's a few different options to look at. If I'm debugging initialization scripts, then I would look in the init scripts folder. And I'm going to see an entry per node. And so you'd pick a node that you want to check. And you'll see there's a standard error and a standard out. So you can check those to see if there's any messages that tell you a little bit more about what went wrong. So normally you don't need to worry about this, but when things do break, that's just how you would take a look at those logs. Uh, probably the easiest way to get to those init logs. There we have it. We've used this library with Azure Databricks to get our logs into Azure Log Analytics. Uh, as I said in the beginning, check out the, the links in the description here to stay up to date as things change. And also keep an eye out for videos that uh, cover more about kind of the future direction of Databricks with observability. Uh, and you may find that you don't need to ship your data to log analytics in the future, uh, but that'll be something I'll let you decide as you take a look at the newer features as they come out. Uh, with that, subscribe to this channel if you want to be up to date as I release videos about that and other videos about using Apache Spark, using Azure, using Databricks, those kinds of things. See you next time.